Subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Hey guys, and welcome back to Streaming with Su Chin. I know, right? Idiot president dude said my name. It's got nothing to do with streaming. It's just bloody random and cool. Anyway, back to the good stuff. We've got lots to discuss and dissect today. February was another exciting month in streaming releases from Narcos, the Nazis, the love stories, the student politics, and Pacino, and lots more. So, like Donald Trump making a speech with maximum confidence and zero idea about what he's about to say, let's dive straight in, shall we? We begin with season two of Narcos Mexico on Netflix. The show is a spin-off to the original Narcos, which helped put Netflix on the map. Narcos Mexico is what I call a calculator show because it's so damn addictive that it makes you a maths expert as you work out how many hours of sleep you're gonna get as you binge watch it every night. Narcos Mexico is easily one of the most underrated gems on Netflix, especially after this explosive second season. The first season was strong and created a hell of a world, but it was a bit of a slow burner and didn't quite pack the same punch as the original Narcos. But season two entirely outdoes the first and is so much more addictive and absorbing, and it's basically just a fantastic gangster drama on crack. Literally. As the title suggests, the show is about the Mexican drug crisis that's plagued the country for decades, and it's all based on true events and real people. The show is led by a powerful performance by the formidable Diego Luna as drug trafficker Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo. And man, that is such a badass name. With a name like that, how are you not going to become a freaking gangster? Season one showed us how he goes from small-time crook to building the country's largest drug empire. But as this new season shows us, starting a cartel empire is all fine and good, but maintaining it—that's a whole other story. I mean, I, I think I, I don't actually know. I've never actually tried starting a drug empire. I mean, I could, I guess. I just haven't really had the time, and it just seems like a lot of work and killing, and I've got this whole back thing. And anyway, the new season is just fantastic storytelling with screams of authenticity, a set of well fleshed out and unforgettable characters, and it's also a visible effort this time around to give us more badass female characters. Narcos Mexico season two is insanely fun and powerful, and teaches you a lot about the real world, and I highly recommend it. Warning: side effects of watching Narcos Mexico includes wanting to become a Mexican gangster. Moving on, closer to home, Netflix had a new Indian original film, Ye Ballet, from director Sunita Rapoorwala, who co-wrote Salam Bombay. Ye Ballet is easily one of the coolest stories we've seen in a Netflix India movie yet. The film is based on an amazing true story of two Mumbai boys from poor backgrounds who made their way to prestigious international ballet schools. It's essentially Gully Boy meets Billy Elliot. But yet again, Netflix disappoints with their set template of great concept but poorly fleshed-out storytelling. Ye Ballet is a weak film with some strong elements. It has all the basic beats you can imagine, introducing us to the two boys Asif and Nishu, their difficult circumstances, their dreams of becoming professional dancers, and their hardened parents telling them to shut the hell up and not have dreams and all that fun stuff. Despite an excellent performance from newcomer Achintya Bose who plays Asif and the credible casting of British actor Julian Sands as the boys' ballet teacher, it doesn't all quite come together and sort of feels just like a tick box exercise in showing a life of hardship. The drama feels limp and entirely on the surface, but most of all, we've seen the essence of the story recently, and we've seen it done better in Zoya Akhtar's Gully Boy. And this just feels like a watered-down version of that. Even the dance, you know, the actual thing, isn't particularly exciting. Also, I'm sorry, but you made a Hindi film about two dancing prodigies, and this is such a glorious opportunity for a great soundtrack. But all we get are two out-of-place wedding songs. Seriously? But in the end, while it has moments of pure heart, Ye Ballet is an inspiring story which deserves better than this. Moving on, Netflix also had a new Indian original series, Taj Mahal 1989. Even if I had all the time in the world, I wouldn't be able to properly convey the bizarre experience of the show. But I'll try anyway because I'm just a hardworking, dedicated bastard, you know. Su Chin. The show is one of the most inconsistent, messy, and weirdly lovable things I've watched in the longest time. Set in Lucknow in 1989, the trailer presented it as a set of interweaving love stories, but it's actually a whole lot more. The show is also a tonal mystery. At times, it's an out-and-out romance. At times, political drama. At times, dark comedy. There's politics and philosophy and love triangles and student elections and murder and I swear at any given time I wouldn't have been able to tell you what's going on or why things are happening or where it's all going. But I still found it strangely endearing. It's just the kind of experience that you just have to submit to rather than make sense of. Clearly, the creators were so busy trying to be layered and thought-provoking that somewhere along the way they forgot the basics of just telling a cohesive story. The writing is scattered and all over the place and doesn't seem to follow any sense of structure. Characters are picked up, followed for a bit, and then just dropped, and then suddenly the tracks just switch with no sense of flow. And every time you think you know who the main characters are, you're wrong. But still, it has some great individual moments and scenes, and there's something to be said about just how ambitious it is. But on the flip side, one thing Netflix is always great at is some solid casting, and there it definitely doesn't disappoint with some fantastic performances, mostly from newcomers. Especially from Shireen Sevani, Anshul Chauhan, and the wonderfully charismatic Anud Singh Dhaka as university students. Also, the craft in terms of just how it's shot and edited is just strange. It attracts far too much attention to itself and frequently just zooms into random objects for reasons unknown. Yo yo, yo I, eyes eyes up here. 
At seven episodes of half an hour each, it does take some time to get going, but despite its weirdness, I maintain the show has a distinct playful charm to it. Taj Mahal 1989 was an absolute mess, but somewhere in this mess, I was mesmerized and entirely taken by it. I suggest you guys watch it to make your own minds up. And last but not least, onto MX Player, which had a new show, Pavan and Pooja, about a set of love stories between three couples across three different generations, where all three couples happen to be called Pavan and Pooja. Sensibility-wise, it's one of those where the creators think a web show is basically just an Indian TV show where you can swear and talk about sex. On the one hand, the writing is unremarkable, but that's uplifted by a strong cast and some wonderful performances. While it's not particularly life-changing, it does make for a light and mostly pleasant watch. The best track of the three is easily the one between the delightful Deepti Naval and Mahesh Manjrekar, which is just wonderful. They share such a warm chemistry and they do a lot for these characters. Comparatively, as a middle-aged couple trying to bring the spark back into their marriage, Shamran Joshi is lovable as always, across a one-note Kulpanag who basically seems to play the same character in everything she's in. There's actually a scene where she's supposed to be FaceTiming her husband, but you can tell she's just scrolling through the script on her phone and reading it out loud. It's unintentional comedy. Also, MX Play has a serious length problem. Bro, I know they say size matters, but they seem to think every show demands 10 episodes of 60 minutes each. Even Netflix doesn't do that with their international shows, and they create the best stuff anywhere ever. In the end, Pavan and Pooja is entertaining and there is a sweetness to it, but in the age of content overload with so much out there to watch, mediocrity just won't do. And if a show doesn't grab you, it just isn't enough. It didn't pass the three episode test for me. That's all for this episode of Streaming with Su Chin. <laughs> that literally never gets old, does it? February also saw the return of the best show ever made anywhere ever with Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, which is perhaps the greatest combination of comedy and real world insight you'll come across. And I just want him to adopt me. Coming up in March is also a whole bunch of exciting stuff with Dice Media's new show Operation MBBS, the grand return of Karishma Kapoor in All Palaji's promising looking mental hood, and also a new Netflix action thriller with Chris Hemsworth called The Extraction, and much more. As always, I'll be here to watch them and give you the lowdown, so see you next time.